today, today I visited myself. 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 And I heard whispers deep down in me. Do it. I hear them say, Do it. 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 Mysterious. And hard to make sense of. These echoing voices haunt me. I can't sleep. These inner voices, these voices, and this is when I decided to listen and embrace the good or the evil in me. I wish I would rewind the wheels of time. Humans are human. Wheels of time, time, time. 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 Yes, all was well and peace prevailed. We lived in harmony love and unity in this land of more than a thousand hills. Suddenly, hatred crept in and I felt the chills as I painfully saw the blood of my people flow. To, to me, me indeed, indeed, it was a blow. Was a blow. I was in agony and I was in silence for what I saw. The silence of pain, the silence of hate and hurt ate me alive and the desire to revenge was alive in me. In me. In me. In me. In me. My name is Sibomana Adrie. In 1994, I was seven years old. I lived with both my parents and my sisters. When the genocide started, we all went hiding, just like anybody else. They, 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 they told us to go in the bushes, and, and, and then we had to, to go and until we, we found a refugee camp. <laughs> it's like life is a circle in motion. <laughs> and that's why I love biking. <laughs> My name is Gasana Emmanuel. In 1994, I killed so many children. I don't like the month of April because I hear voices of children saying, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. And all I do is hide. Hide and cry. Am I human? Am I? My name is Mutoni Marie Claire. I was raised by my grandmother. I was 10 years old in 1994. We lived a normal life until the genocide started. People were killing each other all around me and I was terrified that we may be next. I was so afraid that I couldn't eat. My family encouraged me to eat. But how could I when my friends were being killed? Maybe 
My stomach wanted to remain as empty as my 10 years old heart. We were a family of nine. And only three of us left. I don't like the month of April. Just, just gives me a headache. My, my coach understands and uh, he gives me painkillers. See, the, the, the truth is, every day of my life, I, 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 I see the faces, I see the faces of my brothers, my, my sisters, I, I see them, I, I see them, I see everyone that was killed, I, I see them. When the genocide ended, I was arrested. I confessed to what I had done and my sentence was reduced to seven years in prison. But then I was left with the task of asking for forgiveness. And one woman I had to face was a widow named Murekatete Francine, whose husband has been, had been killed in the swamp, but I had killed her three children. The first time I approached her, she fainted. And when she came to, she ran. I tried again. This time, I walked halfway but then lost my nerve and went back home. The third time, she couldn't see me. The fourth time, I thought, maybe if she cannot forgive me, I can ask her for something smaller. So I asked her for some beans to cook, and she gave them to me. But then I thought, maybe they are poisoned. I threw them away. On the fifth time, I decided to go with my whole family. I confessed in front of her for the first time and my family too. This humiliated me, especially my children who had never understood why I was in jail. And perhaps seeing the reaction of my children made Murekatete believe that this was real. And she forgave me. I'm a forgiven man. I've written my confession owned my deeds in gachacha courts. I have repented in church. And I have asked for forgiveness to a grieving mother. I believe I'm forgiven. Still. Things got worse. And one day we were told to pack whatever we could and flee to Congo. As we were walking, I heard someone groaning by the side of the road. And when I approached, there was lying a woman. She had been hacked at the back of her head on her left arm and left leg with a machete. But despite that, she had a baby who was still alive and breastfeeding. I called my grandmother over, but she ignored me. I approached the dying woman and in a faint voice she said, Please, help me. No, not me. My baby. Please take my baby. God willing, you will both survive.
One day, I was riding a bicycle with my uncle in a bicycle race chess car. I told my uncle that I wanted to do bicycle racing. He, he pointed to one of the leading cyclists and told me, then catch him, take his place. I took my uncle's challenge and I began racing. <laughs> well, the first one wasn't, wasn't that successful. I fainted, picked up by an ambulance, but I didn't give up. I, I didn't give up. Every challenge made me grow. I began of dreaming, becoming a champion of mountain bike racing. Yes, yes, and the 2012 London Olympic, wow, well, my goal, and I was there, racing, racing for my country, Rwanda. <laughs> and and uh, it all started with, with my uncle's challenge who died 12 years ago. Another painful thorn in my life. But, but still, being on a bike, racing as fast as the wind, to me, it's like a rose in a bush of thorns. I reached down and took the baby from her dying mother's breast and wrapped her in a cloth stained by her mother's blood and put her on my back. My family couldn't believe what I had just done. They were saying, you want us all to get killed? If anyone gets to know that you have a Tusi baby, that will be it, we'll be done for. All they could see when they were looking at the little bundle was danger, disaster. But when I looked at her, what I could see was a baby, just a baby. I named her Rosa. Like a rose in a bush of thorns. You braved your way and stood with courage to uphold and value dignity for humanity. Defied death and became a rose in a bridge of roses. And today you are my father, my mother, my sister. And brother, yes, I call you friend. Yeah, All I ever lived for was to take care of Rosa. I hated the way my family treated her. Sometimes they would refer to her as that cockroach. As Rosa was growing up, some other children started telling her that we're not related. And one day, she finally came and she asked me about her relationship. Marie, why does everyone keep saying that you're not my mother? Not my sister, not even my relative at all. Why? I had no choice but to tell her that her mother had been killed. That I found her and raised her. That I was both her mother and her sister. Marie? When you first saw me, what kind of baby was I? What did I look like? What made you decide to take me? You were just a normal baby. A little normal baby. I took you because I thought that whoever had slashed your mother if they came back and found you alive, they would kill you too. Or you may simply die of hunger. 
You are a hapless baby, surrounded by death from every side. What did she look like? My mother. She was dark skinned. Dark, dark skinned, but I'm. I know. You're light skinned. I guess you look like your father. My, my father? Yes. And I'm sure they would have made a great family. But why does your family hate me? They hate you because you become a burden. They kept forcing me to get rid of you because they were afraid that you may get us killed. But again, how could I? I was confused. I didn't want to put my family in danger. I was just a child trying to raise another child. But what had I done wrong? Nothing. How could you? You were just a baby. It's just that you were Tutsi and were Hutu. Having you with us was like cheating on death. You see, they kept forcing me to abandon you on our way to Congo. But I told them to walk in front and then I'll stay behind. And if I had to die, I would die. Maria, there's nothing I could ever do to, to pay you back. <laughs> Come on. God bless me the day I found you. And he has never pro stopped for, by providing for us. Huh? Never forget that. We are both alive. Now, all I want for you is to grow up. Find a good job. Lead a good life. What do you want to become when you grow up? Uh, my dream is to have a profession that, that brings justice or, or kindness or that helps people. Like, like a judge or, or a doctor or an artist. <laughs> an artist? Yes. If you could tell me any little detail you remember about my mother. What her hands looked like. Her fingers, or her eyes. Then I could draw her. Yes, I would draw her. A picture of her, and I would, I would share it with the world. The hardest thing for me now is to ask for forgiveness. See, I love children, but I kill the children. These days I work in an organization that cares for orphans, most of whose parents I killed. Anyway, something good, something good that I have to do to help the children. Rosa. Karame. All I have left of your mother's memory is this blood-stained cloth that I found you in, wrapped you in, and used to carry you in on my back. I always loved African prints. They say all things never truly die, but only change in form and design. One hope, one longing, is enough to weave a piece of cloth, a living fabric that can keep me alive. This world is choked with so many questions, but there is always a rose in a bush of thorns. This I know, no kuripe. Oh, Rosa, don't feel my child. When you cry, I cry. When you smile Oh Rosa Don't feel shy When you cry I cry When you smile
Oh, Mama. I didn't get to say goodbye. I never wanted to live without you. But now, all I have left is this bloodstained cloth. Before your soul left this, your body, you passed me on to another to survive this cruel, cruel world. But now, I have this. Oh, Mama, I will hold it. I will rest in it. I will wear it and take pictures with it and hang it on the walls of my heart that beats with the blood that we share. Oh, Mama, let the wings of your soul carry me with you. Carry me with you for as long as I have this, this memory. We shall never be apart. I will live to make you proud, Mama. I promise. I promise. It is 2015 now, and I am 21 years old. No, I do not know the month or the day I was born. All I know is that I was born in the year of 1994, the year a dark shadow was cast over my motherland. April is a gray month, and will always be a gray month as we remember the innocent lives lost. My two decades of life have been like crawling through a thorn bush. So much fear and dread and hatred. 
but also actual moments of peace, love, and happiness, but, but mostly confusion. You see, the, the pieces don't fit. Why am I here? Why am I still alive? How do people get to do such cruel things? These, these questions, they, 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 they jab me, they cut me. when I am alone. But I, I have friends now at school and their love for me helps me to blossom like a rose. Even among thorns. Riding a bike is the best feeling ever. <laughs> Every time I'm on a bike, I just want to go and go and go and I ride through tomorrow as I greet a new day. <laughs> Dark days do return though. I guess that's how things go in this world. It's always up and down. Round and around and up and down. Just like a moving wheel. It's around and around and around. Hey. I try to live each day in such a way that when tomorrow makes today my yesterday, mm -hmm. I will have woven to the fabric of my life. So that when the great day come, I may look back at the patterns of my checkered past. Doing what you know is wrong wounds the soul. It throws open the memories for regret. But then, there's a door out for you to decide to change. This is what it means to be human for me. I wish I would rewind the wheels of time. To those of you who have become like the fabric of my life. You have brought color to the fabric of my being. In French they say, on est les maîtres de nos choix, which means we are masters of our choices. The ability to choose the good, to try to understand, to care, to help, or the evil that destroys, that's a great gift. I love roses. Roses inspire me. Roses speak when words fail. Roses offer love. 
And when a rose has bloomed through thorns, it's even more beautiful. I hope one day I'll be a woman who doesn't sell vegetables, but sells roses. Or maybe I'll just give them away. Thank <laughs> you.